What's up, Power Appers? April here. Today, we're going to talk about Power Apps UI again. This week, we're going to continue our learning from the Power Apps Wordle application, and we're going to show how we can give our users the chance to choose between different themes, a dark theme and a light theme. I'll break down all the steps involved and how it works right after this. <music> Let's take a look at the Power Apps Whirl application and see how we're going to implement this dark and light mode theme. So we want to give the user the choice to be able to define if they want a dark mode or a light mode. Now, I don't know what camp you fall into, but I am camp dark mode myself. But what I did for this particular app is I've defaulted the theme to a light mode, but I want to give them the option if they click on this settings gear in the upper right hand corner to be able to toggle to a dark theme by just clicking this toggle button. And then that instantly changes the theme to this nice dark theme. Now, if we open this power app in edit mode, we'll see that the concept to implement this is actually extremely simple. So on the click of this settings button, it opens up this panel and here's where I have the toggle. So all the magic is really happening on this toggle button. So I went to insert in my menu here and I went to input and I added one of these toggle buttons. So you see I have this toggle called toggle theme that I've renamed. And then beside it, I just put a label to note what this toggle does. Now, if we look at this toggle, you see in the properties dropdown in the upper left-hand side, we have two main settings that we want to be concerned with. We have a setting called on check and we have a setting called on uncheck. So this determines what should happen when you check it, meaning that value is true. And what should happen when you uncheck it, meaning that value is false. So when I check or highlight it, I want that to be able to tell my application that I want the dark theme. And when I uncheck it or it's the default state, I want it to tell the app that that should be the light theme. So if I look starting off with the on check, you see what I'm using to accomplish this is a context variable using the update context function. This allows me to define a local variable for a given screen in my application. So since I only have one screen in the application, this is a good use for it. Now, if you are doing this in an application where you have multiple screens that you want to apply this theme, you would want to use a global variable instead using the set function. So context variables like I'm using here are good for usage in a single screen, whereas global variables are better if you need to reuse that particular value throughout multiple screens in your app. So I'm creating one of these variables called VAR theme, var theme, and I'm setting the value in this case when it's checked to dark. Conversely, on the on uncheck, I'm using the same global variable var theme, but I'm setting the value of that to light. So that's good for toggling back and forth, but I also want the default value of the theme to default to a light theme. So how I handled that is on this screen's visible property. So if I click on the game screen and I go to on visible, you see that I'm setting a bunch of different variables, but one of them being the var theme variable that I set, and I'm defaulting that to light when this screen is loaded. Now, again, this depends on your use case. Now, for my Wordle application, since it's a single screen application, this worked. But if I had a multi-screen application, I would want to make sure that I did this maybe in the app on start rather than in the screen, because this would mean every time I hit the screen, it would be defaulting my variable to that light value. So the value that I selected in the toggle wouldn't persist if this was a multi-screen application. So these are just little changes to keep in mind depending on the use of your application, but the concept here is the same. So now that we have that variable set to determine if the theme should be light or dark, now it's just a matter of trying to tell what that variable is and applying that to the different objects on our screen. So in my case, if it's a light theme, I want the background of the screens on my application to be white. But if it's a dark theme, it should be black. So to do that, I can click on the game screen and I can go to its fill property from the properties pane. And you see, I'm using a very simple power FX formula. I'm using the if function and I'm checking on my var theme variable. And I'm saying if var theme is set to a value of light, change the color of the background to white. Otherwise, change the color of the background to this RGBA color. Now you might be wondering, I don't know all these RGBA color values. What color is this? How do I know if this formula is correct? Well, the Power Apps formula bar gives us a nifty built-in capability to be able to tell what color this is. So if I click right here where it says RGBA, 
you see that the formula bar updates with the actual color of what that is. So I can make sure and double check that that is the correct dark color that I want for my dark theme. And I can just rinse and repeat this formula in multiple places throughout my app where the colors need to change. So when it's dark, for example, I don't want all of these colors for my labels to be black also because it would blend in. I need to change those colors to white in that instance. So if you'll notice on this settings label, for example, if I go to its color property here in the properties pane, you'll see I'm using that exact same formula. I'm saying if the theme is dark in this case, set it to this kind of light gray, almost white color. Otherwise, if it's light, set the color to black. So I'm just going to apply the same concept in various places throughout my application. And honestly, that's really all there is to it to be able to do this dark and light mode theme and be able to let our end users choose the option that they want. That's a little bit of work up front to be able to go and touch all of your individual controls to do this. But once you get it set up, you really don't have to touch it again. Now, the only other thing that I did unique to this app to be able to physically get to the screen you notice is when I clicked on this gear, this panel popped up with all this information to be able to choose the settings. So that's using a pop-up panel, or you might have heard it referred to as a dialog box as well. So that's again, another very simple concept. I have demonstrated this in another video, um, but we're just relying on those same variables to do this. So I've added multiple objects that I want to be able to show in this pop-up panel, like configure hard mode, dark theme, I have a colorblind mode as well. So I've just added in those objects and I went through and I grouped them. And we can group objects by selecting them from the tree view and holding down the control key. So you see I have all of these objects selected, for example, and I can click the three dots next to those and select group. So once I have all the objects that I want to show or hide in a group, like I do on the group settings. Then we can set its visible property to a global variable that we set on the selection of the icon we want to have open up the panel. So in my case, if we go back and we look at that settings icon, you see that on, it's on select. I'm setting a context variable called var settings to true. So you see that's why on my group settings visible property, I have that directly bound to the var settings property. So that means as I toggle that to true when I click on this gear, that will show all of these grouped items here. And then you'll notice I have this cancel button here at the upper right hand side of the panel. So I'm setting the VAR settings back to false to go and hide it. So very simple approach to do pop-up boxes. And what I showed you just now is just one way to do a simple, configurable, dark mode, light mode concept in your Power Apps. Another great resource that I'll point you to, which I have made other videos about on my channel, is this cool Power Apps theme builder that Sancho built that's a part of the Power Apps COE. So this template actually lets you build your own custom themes for Power Apps. And that way you can save the theme, open it up, and have that theme automatically applied to all your controls. So the big benefit of say using something like this, which is free to download on the Power Users Forum, and I'll put a link to this in my video, is rather than having to set the variables like I did and go into each of your objects and say, if equals that, then change to this color. Well, you can use a theme for that and it'll automatically color code all of your objects in your Power App to match your theme. So if we look inside of Power Apps and we click on the Home tab, we see that we have this theme option and we have a few out-of-the-box themes. But if we're trying to match you know, company brand standards or do something more custom, these out-of-the-box themes might not cut it. So you can use Sancho's theming app here to create a custom theme and have that automatically apply to all the controls as you add them in. So hopefully this gave you some good ideas of how you can add dark and light themes into your Power Apps UI. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to learn more about Power Apps UI, be sure to check out this video on how to create your own branding screen or this playlist on Power Apps UI tips. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.